This podcast is a quest for well-being, a quest for a meaningful life through the exploration of fundamental truths, enlightening ideas, insights on physical, mental, and spiritual health. The inspiration is love. The aspiration is to awaken new ways of thinking that can lead us to a new way of being, being well. Welcome to Body, Mind, and Soul Healing Conversations. Driven by her unwavering belief in the transformative power of holistic health, Patricia stands as a beacon of knowledge, inspiration, and compassion. Through Holistic Performance Lab, she has created a sanctuary where individuals can discover their true potential and embark on a lifelong journey towards optimal well-being. Valeria interviews Patricia Ivanska. She is a passionate and highly educated professional with a multifaceted background in the fields of psychology, nutrition, and functional movement. Her unique combination of expertise has equipped her company with a holistic understanding of human well-being and the interconnectedness of physical and mental health. With a master's degree in psychology, Patricia possesses a deep understanding of human behavior, emotions, and the intricacies of the mind. Her academic journey has helped her hone in the skills necessary for assessment, counseling, and providing psychological support to her clients, empowering them to overcome mental health challenges and foster emotional resilience. Patricia holds a wealth of knowledge and expertise in nutrition coaching. She is committed to the promotion of balanced and healthy eating as a fundamental component of overall wellness. Her expertise in nutrition extends to advising clients on dietary choices that support physical health, manage weight, and optimize energy levels. She has completed multiple courses around holistic nutrition as well as autoimmune nutrition coaching. Patricia brings a practical understanding of how the body's biomechanics, mobility, and physical fitness are integral to overall well-being. They have a strong foundation in exercise science and functional training which enables them to create personalized fitness programs that enhance mobility, strength, and flexibility. She is dedicated to helping individuals achieve their fitness goals and improve their quality of life through functional movement. Patricia has an extensive background in functional movement, from TRX training to kettleball, VIPR, personal training, and Pilates. Whether it's guiding individuals toward better mental health, providing nutritional advice, or developing functional movement plans, Patricia is committed to a client-centered approach. This holistic perspective emphasizes the interplay between psychology, nutrition, and movement, recognizing that true well-being encompasses the mind and body. Patricia is a passionate advocate for empowering individuals to lead healthier, more fulfilling lives by harnessing the synergy of psychology, nutrition, and functional movement. Her dedication to holistic health and well being makes her a trusted and valuable resource for those seeking a comprehensive approach to self improvement and personal growth. Meet Patricia at holisticperformancelab.com. Here's the interview with Patricia Ivanska. In your own words, who is Patricia Ivanska? I feel like I can say that I am a dedicated holistic coach, uh, passionate about guiding individuals um, on their transformative journey to optimal well-being um, with a background in psychology and nutrition, functional movement. I bring a unique and integrated approach to coaching. Um, and my mission is to empower clients to unlock their full potential by addressing the interconnected aspects of mind, body, and spirit. Ah, that's wonderful. So I have to ask you this follow-up question. What inspired you to become a coach, Patricia? 
I began the journey when I was in Poland and my mom used to take me to this wellness facility uh, where they were fun- where they're focusing on movement, nutrition, regeneration. And it was a beautiful facility in nature um, by the lake. And it was just so transformative. And I remember every time I would go there. I was always the youngest one. And I remember talking to so many beautiful individuals and how, you know, the environment and, and all the knowledge and, and the people that they're around, um, transforms their life. And I truly wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to always, um, have an impact, a positive impact on people's life. And I thought that doing that, you know, I can uh, influence more people and help them live their best life. So um, what a beautiful mission to have, to help others to live their best life, to explore their own potential. And I often ask the question to myself, always first, (laughs) what is to live our best life? What are some of the common, let's say, qualities that that we can share when it comes to that? What would you say is a best life that probably everyone would would agree with or pretty much most people would i think everyone is a is very different we're all culturally different spiritually different and i think that staying true to self is one of the big parts of our life and truly staying true to who we are and what we believe in um, and who you, we surround ourselves with. I think that's the most important part because by not knowing ourselves, we can create something that um, gives us pleasure or excitement, right, in life. But once we discover who we are, understand and love, we're able to nurture it. Mm, wow. That's a profound answer. I love the way you said that. I mean, it's very clear to me that it's different for everyone, right? But then being true to that uniqueness, right? Something that it seems like a lifetime practice. One, finding what the uniqueness is and then being true to it. It, it takes courage, doesn't it, Patricia? Absolutely. I think staying true to ourselves is one of the hardest things because there's so many distractors right around us that we on a daily basis have to make choices and make decisions about what really is best for us. Right, right. You mentioned spirituality and also the connection, the interconnected connectedness between body, mind, spirit. What is your understanding of spirituality these days, Patricia? Uh, I like to call it a holistic spirituality, it refers to um, an approach to a spiritual well-being that recognizes and integrates the interconnectedness of various uh, dimensions of human existence, physical, mental, emotional, social, and it emphasizes a comprehensive and balanced uh, perspective on spirituality that goes beyond religious traditions um, to encompass the whole person, right? And Mm -hmm. there's key components of that, which is mind-body connection, right? Like acknowledging the interplay between mental and physical well-being, um, like meditation, yoga, mindfulness. Um, Then we have the emotional wellness, right? So recognizing and addressing emotional states um, as integral to spiritual health, uh, Mm -hmm. cultivating emotional intelligence, self-awareness, positive relationships, it's all so important for our overall overall well-being. Um, I think I mentioned the social and environmental consciousness, uh, which is understanding spirituality in the context of social relationships and environmental um, factors, and engaging in compassion and um, interactions with others and the environment uh, is very very important. Right? We're not really meant to live. Um, without it, like it's very difficult to live these days without a community, right? Mm-hmm. Um, community is such a huge part of our well being, um, our spirituality, right? Um, and then connection to nature, um, which is spending time, you know, in nature, fostering a sense of environmental mindfulness, 
um, you know, it's a huge part of uh, the spirituality. And then, you know, wellness practices like um, bal- maintaining a balanced, n- uh, nutritious diet, uh, regular mindful movement, because there's a difference between an exercise, a regular exercise where we go and, you know, perform uh, an exercise. And then there is a difference between you know, mindfully performing an exercise, right? Those are two different things. Um, Feeling it, understanding it, moving within and the breath work. It's so such a difference um, when performing this way. Mm -hmm. Um, And then obviously cultivating compassion, which is you know, um, empathizing with others, um, service to others as expression of spiritual uh, wellness, acts of kindness. Um, Very, very important. There's so many aspects. Like sometimes I just get blown away with um, how many factors influence our life and the way we feel. So I think in a nutshell, that's what I think spirituality is. Wow. Wow. So I heard a lot of uh, you saying, using the word connection, yeah, connecting, connecting. So there's a lot of, it's almost like having a a healthy relationship with everything that makes us human and including our environment, right? In other people. That's such a beautiful thing. This kind of, let's say, practice of being, feeling connected, it is a practice, in fact, right, Patricia? Absolutely. And I think um, it's very important to nurture it on a daily basis, doing our best to, to, to feel and stay true to ourselves. Mm, yes. You see, because a lot of times I remember having this misconception that there was, um, let's say, a destination for peace, <laughs> for happiness, for health. <laughs> I'll get there and stay there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it doesn't work that way. It's something that it's dynamic, isn't it? Even healing even the word healing implies that, I-N-G, right? At the end, is something that's moving, that is constantly happening. It's mm-hmm. not a destination. It's not fixed. And speaking of misconceptions, so talk to me for a moment more specifically about health, the idea of health. What are some of the misconceptions we have about being healthy? And from your perspective, what is to be, to be a healthy human being? It's a very difficult topic because many people think that being healthy is, you know, being on a diet, you know, intaking this many calories a day or making sure I do my six workouts in a week or, you know, making sure I go to to my job, you know, and I do all these things and, um, you know, taking all the supplements, right, that that's that's being healthy, right? Like going on being, being very diligent at work, um, eating at certain times. Um, I feel like it's very, um, like structured, like very regiment, like you have to do this in order to be healthy. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think the most important thing is to understand ourselves and how our body works and what is, what, what do we feel good um, doing or right. Like if we're enjoying eating, you know, because let's say culturally we were raised in Europe and we love to celebrate dinners with our families and have, you know, fish and this and that, you know, that's a, that's a healthy approach to, to life. Correct. Like you are enjoying, you're connecting to others. You're enjoying the meal. You're preparing it together rather than having, okay, 300 calories. I have to make sure I complete this by this time, because if not, so I think understanding what is, what works with us and what is, what we feel good after or doing as well makes it more healthy for us because there's one thing that can be healthy for person A and then there's something else that can be healthy for person B. Person can have an autoimmune disease and this person may have, you know, type 2 diabetes. So, right, like, okay, what are some of the practices that are going to be best for these people? And they do still, they can feel healthy while practicing what's best for them. Mm, That's so true. So it goes back to that uniqueness, right? What fits one, doesn't fit everybody else. It's very different to the idea of health. You know, you reminded me of a case of a man who was diagnosed with stage four cancer. 
and the doctor gave him, he was Greek, and the doctor gave him, I believe it was six months to live or even less than that. So there was nothing we can do. No, this is just relax and die, basically. And then he said, ah, okay, so if I'm dying anyway, so I'll go back to Greece. And that's what he did. So he went back and he engaged in, in with the community there and his family, people that he still had and some friends in Greece. He lived and then he's still alive, I believe, 10 years later. So the cancer went away. And he was eating everything that he wanted. He was just kind of laughing more, relaxing. He was not thinking about that he was dying. So it's so hard to tell, right, Patricia? It's really hard to pin down what works and what it does. I know that's what science is very good at it, trying to show us how the physical world works and and what can we do to get you know certain outcomes and all. But there's something about the expression of freedom itself, which I, I really see human beings being part of the web of freedom and just kind of embracing that in a way. Like, what if I'm open, you know, to a miracle? What if I don't do anything, you know, if I don't try as hard as so many people do, you know, to get to be healthy? Well, you know, could I be healthy? And I would say yes, though. I, I see that the, the less I try, actually, the healthier I become. Yes, of course. Right? It's almost like instead of adding, removing, mm -hmm. <laughs> making life more simple. I don't know. There's something about simplicity that really yes. resonates with me. Yes. And I think, um, you know, I'll go back to the, the background in psychology. I think it's mm -hmm. so, so important to reassess and see our lives, how, how we started, what were we exposed to, what worked for us or worked, what, what happened to us, and then how we evolved. And looking at ourselves from that perspective and seeing, um, you know, growing up in this culture or growing up around this people, family, you know, and that would always bring us back to the root of who we are and what what is going to be the healthiest for us. Right. right. And I think that's the big piece of, you know, being so what th people may think it's healthy, but truly understanding who we are, our emotions, our feelings, mm -hmm. um, our physiology, our genetics truly understanding that is going to be a, a, a great beginning and start defining the best approach for us. Yes. I really, I love that though, that you have this psychology background that, that so, super help when it comes to understanding the human nature. And it goes back to self-awareness. So self-knowledge, right, Patricia, just going back to basics in a way. So let's talk about exactly that, the nervous system, which has a lot to do with our emotions. So the topic is navigating our nervous system and holistic approach to regulate it. So the first question first, what is the nervous system? So the nervous system um, in the polyvagal theory that um, I would like to talk about uh, is... Yes and how to regulate the nervous system, uh, we first need to understand um, the autonomic nervous system. So the nervous system is a complex network of nerves and cells that transmit signals between different parts of the body that regulates many of our body um, automatic functions, such as heart rate, digestion, breathing. Um, mm -hmm. And anatomically speaking, it consists of the central nervous system um, and the peripheral nervous system. Um, so two very important systems. Um, the central nervous system includes the brain and the spinal cord, um, while the peripheral nervous system includes all the nerves that extend from the uh, central nervous system to the rest of the body. Um, and then obviously the, the central nervous system is further divided into branches, the somatic, um, a conscious interbody communication channel um, between the central nervous system and our skin and muscles and autonomic nervous system, the channel dedicated to connecting the central nervous system to the visceral organs, such as the heart, stomach, and intestines. 
Um, and even further, the vision of the autonomic nervous system brings us to the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system, the primary players in learning how to regulate our nervous system. Um, yeah, and this, the nervous system is responsible for controlling and coordinating all the body's functions, um, including movement, sensation, perception, and thinking. It receives uh, information from the environment through the senses, processes um, that information in the brain, and then sends out the signal to the muscles and organs to respond appropriately. It's pretty mighty, right? It's powerful. <laughs> Wow. Um, yes. For the nerds out there, that's uh -huh. perfect. <laughs> so let me ask a relatable question that, you know, most people will understand from that perspective. How do we know when the nervous system is dysregulated, when it's not working properly? Um, so there's, you know, the, the, the dysregulated nervous system is one that is out of balance. So we feel out of balance right? It's, it's too much activation of the sympathetic um, and too little activation of the parasympathetic. Um, so think about it as parasympathetic um, is relaxed and then the sympathetic is more fight or flight when we're in fight or flight. Um, so this can lead to a variety of symptoms, anxiety, depression, chronic pain, digestive problems, and immune dysfunction. Um, there are many potential causes of a dysregulated nervous system, including trauma, chronic stress, poor nutrition, lack of sleep, exposure to toxins. So I think it ties really well into what I said in, in the beginning is that understanding ourselves, right? What kind of trauma did we go through if we did? Um, what kind of stress were we exposed to? What did we eat? Uh, how did we sleep? Were we exposed to toxins? It's so important to understand our nervous system and the way it works. Wow. So it can be affected by a number of factors, right? Of external factors. That's amazing. Oh, internally and external. Yes, in my case, it was trauma, yes, childhood trauma and all that. And gosh, I remember even to this day, though, sometimes I feel like I think I write really badly. I have a hard time typing when I type. It's really like uh, it, there's something in the body that rushes and I make a lot of mistakes when I type and write with my hands. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with that. It's still the, the residue of the effects of trauma. Mm -hmm. Would you I say so, Patricia? Definitely would love to uh, like Hi, the understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like, uh -huh. you know, were exposed to um, something in the past. Um, I feel like we all go through small, big traumas in our life and they have a huge impact on our life, right? So um, like you mentioned that you were, you know, this is kind of what difficulty you have. I, I, I still have certain things that um, like driving a car, right? Like I have these moments while I'm driving where I get a little bit of anxious because, you know, I know what happened in the past and I know why I have these feelings. And it's, it's like, a, um, it's, it's a normal, our normal, uh, response to, to, to a situation like that. So, um, I think understanding and acknowledging and maybe going back to a possibility of when something happened and what, happened will allow you to understand the the functioning right now does that mm. make sense yes it does so in in this case just trying to understand what caused that it's almost like because i have been my nervous system has been dysregulated for so long for many years complex trauma in all ptsd so that might be still in the body somewhere here, I mean, all over the body, obviously. But I'm wondering if that relates to this um, fight, you know, mode and, and always, for certain things, though, it's not, especially, I, I just noticed, I think I never said that to anybody, but you now, that's interesting too. So the typing thing and the writing, like my handwriting, no one can read. It's really bad. And so typing and uh, with a computer and writing, 
Mm. So I'm wondering because the hands, right, the, ext- the extremities of the body, the limbs. So w- does, this, does it make sense uh, from that perspective that, that those are the areas that the nervous system will be mostly like, like uh, if, when the, it's regulated, will be activated? Yes. Legs and arms, right, Patricia? Yes, yes absolutely. Yes. Ah, yeah. so... You know, we store our, you know, traumatic experiences, emotions in our body, right? So when when you're, you know, able to release the tension that you hold in your body, it's through movement, through meditation, through, you know, a certain kind of massage therapy um, with emotional release. Um, That's kind of the times where you can focus on that area or you can focus on that, you know, difficulty you're having. And it's definitely something that you can improve on. Um, it's, it's it's just it takes a lot like a lot of effort and and work to to be able to overcome that. Um, I do still think that the the trauma experience, um, you know, is is going to activate with uh, while the similar while you're in a similar um, environment or situation or feeling that's when it activates. Ah, yes. Right. Right. And this is not the case though, because I'm not in the same situation, but, or anything that reminds me of that. Uh So I'm wondering if this is just kind of, like you said, it might be something that's still stored in the body, but I'm not able to, I never actually thought about now doing something to, I have meditated. I do a lot of deep breathing, but exercise and all that, ah, social connection, that's my favorite. <laughs> I know I'm just going through here some of the, the polyvagal techniques uh, uh-huh. to regulate the nervous system. So mm-hmm. I kind of do all that self-compassion, all that. And th- I guess the question for you is, is it possible to become healed, you know, for s- from so- certain things like uh, traumatic experiences? Should we expect actually to be fully healed from it? Oh, it's okay to accept that some residues, you know, some storages will remain. Yes, I think that um, you know it's what we've over, like we've, what we went through in life. It's a part of us, and we can't get rid of it. Um, we can definitely, you know, um, work on the the things that that we're struggling with right now that are kind of residues for what happened to us in the past, right? Yeah. And um, try to like learn how to manage our stress effectively, Mm. right? Yes. Because chronic stress can lead to, um, you know, a lot of difficult um, things in life. Mm. Uh, Like say something happened to us, um, you know, on an emotional level, um, and yeah, of course we can, you know, recognize it, know what happened, uh, work like, let's say trauma, right? You work with a specialist on, um, on your traumas and you work through it, right? Mm-hmm. And implementing different practices to feel better and to feel like you're able to function in the society and I think that gives you that feeling of being healed. Um, uh, yeah. Like uh, actively working on it. But this has to be a daily, a daily work that we do um, to support our health and to... I don't think the healing is like we, you mentioned earlier, like healing is that destination process of evolving, of, um, you know, maturing, of um, understanding ourselves more, uh, understanding our past more, uh, but talking about it uh, with a specialist and, you know, or writing, journaling or meditating um, allows us to to heal from it. Because I feel like once we understand why and understand the process, we feel so much more at peace, mm-hmm. right? Because we yeah. know happened or we know how we deal with it or we know what are some of the things that help us feel better Mm. will benefit us on a daily uh, basis yeah yes you see the commitment to healing right to self-awareness yes absolutely and I'm very self-aware certain extent of course I wouldn't say everything there's so many blind spots right Patricia one of the things that I have also learned is that when I see the body 
responding to the nervous system, respond in a certain way, certain situations, or even when I'm completely relaxed and then I still kind of notice those residues, you know, in the body. It feels to me almost like a scar. You know, you can't really get rid of the scars. You just look at them and and it kind of reminds you of what you went through. And sometimes it doesn't. But there's something about not trying to... I think a good analogy is a type of pottery from Japan. You probably heard about that. Kenzuki, Kenzuki, um, I can't pronounce the name. It's a Japanese name. It's a type of pottery that the porcelain is broken mm-hmm. and in, into pieces, and then they put it together in a very artistic way. It actually looks really beautiful too. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, it looks very. You can, you can, you can still see the where it broke. You know, all the the cracks and where it was fixed, you know, the attempt to fix, glue it together and then try to cover up. <laughs> but it's it's still there. It's so visible. But then there's something, there's beauty in it. When you look, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I try to see my, like what I went through from those lens. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it also, you can look at it as, you know, like you mentioned, you see the scar, you know what you went through or like remind you of what you went through. But it also a great reminder of, how far you've come and how far you've accomplished or how far you, how much you've grown or, um, right. Like so, so much positive from it. Um, so I think it's also the way and our positive outlook on life situations, traumas. Um, I, I under, sometimes it's very difficult, right? Because the traumas are, um, very severe. And that's why the work on, you know, working through it and working on, um, you know, uh, overcoming it, um, neutralizing the symptoms or knowing what to do on a daily basis to like support the, the nervous system. It's very important, right? But we're looking at it in a positive way. It's kind of like a reminder of this is what I went through and this is who I am. Mm, yes, what the body mind um, has become because of it, right? I try not to kind of label who I am, referencing the body mind because it because of my spiritual philosophy <laughs> or the spiritual philosophy that I embrace, which is Advaita Vedanta. I'm a student of that philosophy. This is not really. We'll probably need another conversation for that topic, <laughs> but so it's an interesting one. So, but going back, Patricia, yes, right. The positive outlook that's really important to me. Acceptance is just key, so important. It has been like huge on my journey, healing journey, and then also being aware what to do, right? The things that we can do. It's not because we have been hurt that we needed to hurt our entire lives. So we can do something about it. You know, I heard a quote the other day from, I think a psychologist. Yeah. He said, we mature when we become responsible for the things that we are not responsible for. Absolutely. Wow. I love that quote. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It makes sense, doesn't it? It's so, so clear to me. And so much truth to it. And so, you know, we can all relate to that, right? Things that happened to us in the past, we're not responsible for, for example, but, right, like learning how to uh, live with it and accept it, right, with mm-hmm. acceptance of it, that we're not in charge of all the things that happen to us. Mm, yes. Yes, that's it. Yes. But we can do something about it. Take responsibility for that too. Yeah. Right. In the name of our own peace, right? You know, our own happiness. Health, well-being and right. healing process. <laughs> mm, yes. You know, my favorite words these days are health, healing, wholeness. Love it. There's something about those three words. Um, so going back to the, uh, so the Polyvagal techniques, I mentioned some of them. You did too, because I'm reading here the article you sent me. They yeah. outlined all of them. So so deep breathing, mindfulness, meditation, yoga, and stretching, social connection, and self-compassion. Mm-hmm. So I want to mention that again before I move to another question to you. So the other question that some people might be kind of interested in hearing is, the role of diet and nutrition. This is from one of your guided questions to me. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about what's the best, let's say, foods to ingest when it comes to regulating our nervous system. So 
again, going back to, um, you know, each individual, right? We're all very different. We all have to um, be aware of, you know, if we have any health issues or any, um, you know, let's say auto, I personally have an autoimmune disease. Um, so having an autoimmune disease or, um, certain condition, like you have to be aware of that in order to start looking at it. Right. Um, but nutrition plays a, a crucial role in supporting a balanced and regulated nervous system. Um, and, the foods that we consume provide um, the nutrients necessary to, for the production of neurotransmitters, hormones, and um, other molecules that influence nerve function. Mm -hmm. A well-balanced diet uh, can contribute to mental health, emotional well-being. Um, and here are some of the things that I can point out um, in terms of um, nutrients that will support, um, the balanced and regulated nervous system. And that would be, um, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, mm -hmm. which you can find in fatty fish, salmon, sardines, uh, which are also very anti-inflammatory. So a great addition to your diet, flax seeds, chia seeds, um, walnuts and, um, mackerel. Um, and they um, contribute to the structure of cell membranes and play a role in the neurotransmitter function. So very, very important. And the benefit of them, uh, supportive, supporting cognitive function, reducing inflammation and contributing to overall mental well-being. So a great addition. Uh, let's say chia seeds or flax seeds, we can always add to our oatmeal or sprinkle it on an avocado toast or our salads. Um, so it's a great, great addition. I personally love recommending my clients um, just adding a few sardines a day um, as a snack because it's it's quick when they're at work, um, but anti-inflammatory. And it really does help even with um, like a productiveness in a day because of the, uh, um, the fat content. Um, mm -hmm. then protein, right? Uh, proteins provide amino acids, uh, which are the building blocks of neurotransmitters. Um, and sources include lean meats, fish, uh, legumes, nuts, seeds, uh, dairy products. Um, and during this time of the year, I feel like I love to recommend, uh, like a lentil soup, right? Mm -hmm. With nuts. Yes. Um, or a baked fish or a salmon. Um, and, you know, the protein supports the synthesis, uh, synthesis of neurotransmitters like serotonin, dopamine. And um, so it's very, very important in our uh, daily life. Uh, yeah, then we have, you know, antioxidants. Uh, which you can find in fruits and vegetables, berries, blueberries, leafy greens, um, and they protect the brain from the oxidative stress and inflammation. Um, so great to add to your breakfast or lunch, um, like uh, also like citrus fruits, like uh, cold pressed juices um, that you can add to your diet as well. Uh, magnesium, uh, which is found in leafy greens, nuts and seeds, um, and it's involved in nerve function and relaxation. So let's say someone has problems with sleep or um, deep relaxation, I would definitely recommend um, intake, intaking um, foods with high level of magnesium. Um, zinc, which is found in meat, um, dairy, nuts, and seeds. Um, and that plays a role in neurotransmitter synthesis and function. Um, so now also these days when we're getting sick, right, we're more exposed to, um, it's getting colder. I, I'm in California, so <laughs> we're having that right now, but, uh, very important to, to add that to your diet, um, just to, um, you know, boost your immune system. Um, you know, there's there's so many um, components. Uh, one of my favorites is green tea, which contains um, uh, an amino acid that has calming and the anti-anxiety effect. 
Um, I love to drink green tea as I'm drinking it now um, during the day just to kind of support my fun- my nervous system function. Um, and I definitely feel the big benefit from it. Wow. That sounds wonderful. I love these suggestions, though. You mentioned green tea. I drink green tea, too. But you know, I, I switched from coffee to green tea because I don't do well with caffeine. But green tea has caffeine, right, Patricia? Has some. It does have caffeine. It does have a smaller amount of caffeine. But green tea is very uh, dehydrating. So whenever you drink uh, green tea, you want to make sure that you mm-hmm. add an extra cup of water. It does have the dehydrating, uh, you know, not benefits, but it does dehydrate us a little bit more. Yes. So that's good to know. I did know that. Yeah. Now I should add more water. Maybe I can add also have cold green tea. I never thought about it. I usually have a hot, but cold might be good too. And one of the things that you mentioned, foods that I miss is salmon, like fresh salmon, Alaskan wild caught salmon. Yes. They don't have it since we moved to Florida. We used to live in New York Uh and the salmon there was amazing. I've never been to California, so I don't know how it is there. But Uh you tell me, Patricia. (laughs) Do you find salmon there? Is that easy to find? Um, so I personally, I am plant, I eat plant-based. Ah, uh, yeah. Do eat, uh, fish and other proteins once in a while. Um, when they come from a good source, I, I was born in Europe. So mm-hmm. I, I was very fortunate to have an access to high quality meats and, mm-hmm. and vegetables and fruits. So I will feel like I was very blessed. Mm-hmm. Um, although here, whenever I recommend with the people that I work with, just finding a good source. Um, we have a few like fish markets here that, you know, they deliver a great source of and the great quality salmon and fish and meat. Mm-hmm. So I think it's important to find a good um, source and make sure do some research before um, because um, you want to make sure that you eat the good quality uh, yes. product. Yes, it would be wild caught in that sense, right? I think that's the best out there, I think. So we're almost at the end. I do have some other points here. So exercise is also part of that. Uh, Regulating the nervous system is really incredibly beneficial. I know you already mentioned here yoga and stretching. That counts as an exercise, right, Patricia? Of course, yoga is is an amazing exercise too. Yes. Absolutely. 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 You know, yoga combines the deep breathing, um, movement and meditation, uh, making an effective way to regulate the nervous system. And I think that with any movement, um, it can be yoga, Pilates, um, you know, strength training. When we're really focusing on breath work, um, because it's so important while we're performing any exercise, um, it affects our nervous system in a positive way, right? Mm, Holding our breath, lifting our shoulders up, um, you know, breathing through our chest. It's it's not, it doesn't give us as much benefit as really focusing and feeling and breathing while we're moving. Um, So it's very, very important. And the gentle yoga, um, you know, practices um, target specific stretches intended to target the vagus nerve, right? What we're talking about, the, the polyvagal theory, it's, you know, it targets the, the vagus nerve. Um, and there's excellent exercises that um, you can utilize at home or, you know, if you go to like a yoga studio um, that can you can benefit from. Yes. Wow. That's wonderful to know. Yeah. I have an idea how powerful yoga is. And also as a spiritual practice, I know it, it's not just exercise. You know, some yoga teachers, I know you are also, they actually don't really like when I, I, I think I have said that here, that was a form of exercise, but they see it as an exercise, but also it's something that's beyond, way beyond exercise, physical exercise, right? Yes, absolutely. You're You're connecting within and You know, it's, I treat it also like if I feel like I want to go um, and have a a meditation, I'll go to a yoga or I'll perform yoga by myself in my, you know, my place or my studio. And it kind of transitions me into that meditating um, state. So I I actually like to meditate while in like a stretching position or yoga position. Um, Mm -hmm. This does help me to, um, to focus and, 
mindfully meditate. Right. Uh, that's wonderful. I want to also mention before I ask you my ending questions that you are the founder. Uh, let me go back. Yes, you are the founder of Holistic Performance Lab. And there, I also want to mention the services that you offer, great ones. So personal training, highly individualized nutrition coaching, yoga and meditation class, massage therapy, refreshing sleep coaching. That's really great. I never heard it that way, refreshing sleep coaching. And then you have also, you also offer the uh, wellness retreat. That yes. caught my attention. That looked so incredibly peaceful. Those three words kind of came <laughs> together, you know, just reminded me of those three words, health, healing, and wholeness. Yes, I love it. Yes. So, um, you know, within personal training, we, you know, we focus on mindful movement and join by join approach. So um, very different way of approaching to fitness and exercise. Um, so I'm, I'm a big fan of it and I've been practicing it for over 15 years. Um, um, and then also holistic coaching, nutrition coaching. Um, but when it comes to the retreat, I am very excited. I used to, um, organize them back home in Poland. Um, and I love just the part of, um, connecting with others, right? Mm, So creating a, a retreat where, we all can um, enjoy all these movements, nutrition, mm-hmm. classes, regeneration, exercises, but at the same time be able to connect with one another. Mm-hmm. And I think that's one of the most important parts of our life, the connection aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. yeah. And uh, yeah, we're now working on like an online platform as well. Um where we can combine a little bit more in depth also like a mindset um, approach, uh, working with our mindset, uh, life coaching and more, uh, psychological aspects. So very exciting. And I just am so thrilled to be able to connect with people and share the love that I have for my passions and beliefs. And, um, yeah. That's wonderful, Patricia. Yeah, that's really, really wonderful. You see, we go back to that uniqueness, right? Knowing what's unique about you and your passions are and having the courage to engage with it in a, in a healthy way. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for what you do. Thank you so much for having me today. I really appreciate it. So before we say goodbye for today, I do have a few more questions for you. The ending questions. One's a technical one, but the the one before, it's a more philosophical one per se. Let me see. I guess I'll ask the question that I usually ask everyone at the end. What three experiences you wish everyone to have before they die, before they lose the body? Oh my goodness. That is, um, I would think going and truly feeling what, um, like experiencing love and happiness towards ourselves Mm. and uh, like truly loving ourselves. That's one of the experience that I would love people to experience. Um, because many people focus on, you know, family, which is important kids, you know, very important, but we all have a tendency to forget about ourselves and giving ourselves the love um, experience of connect, true connection with one another, uh, either on a partnership level or, you know, friendship level. Um, I think it's, I've recently experienced that. And I think it's something that I never thought I'll be able to experience. And it's so powerful and it's so beautiful. And I really, really wish that everyone can experience that. Um, and the third, I think I would love for people to, to, to experience their full potential, like full potential of, of living, um, either on a, you know, parenting level or, you know, a more, uh, work, uh, related level, right. a spiritual level, um, just any full potential of their work and their focus in life. Wow, that's beautiful. I love your wisdom, (laughs) your beautiful wisdom. Yes, yes, yes. Self-love. I love the way you you talked about self-love. 
Yes, that's a big one, though. It might be the, the foundation, right, Patricia, for the other ones. Thank you so much again for everything that you're doing in this reality, the way you're expressing yourself, being open um, to explore yourself and then sharing what you find, the insights you find. Uh, there's something about that that it really resonates with my heart. So thank you again for your presence. Thank you. I really appreciate you. And before we say goodbye for today, where's the best place to find more information about you, Patricia, besides your website? Um, I think, you know, um, we're very active on Instagram, uh, Holistic Performance Lab. Um, our Instagram handle, um, we're working on a soon released, um, a revive platform where there's just going to be so many resources for, for self-love, well-being, mm -hmm. um, optimal health. Um, and yeah, I think if someone wants to hear more about or work or hear more about what I do, they can definitely reach out via email through the website. And um, yeah, and I would love to connect. Wonderful. Thank you so much again. And we'll talk soon. Bye for now, Patricia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. To learn more about Patricia Ivanska and her work, please visit holisticperformancelab.com. To learn more about this podcast, please visit fitforjoy.org slash podcast. Thank you again for listening and bye for now.